So I, um, I start with uh, recalling very briefly, since people were asking where am I heading, where am I coming from, so I repeat very briefly what we, what we did in the previous times. So the previous times, there was a lecture one, which has a general introduction. And basically, it, it led to the conjecture that if x over k is a smooth, projective, rationally connected or a number field, then we hope that uh, the topological closure of the set of rational points is equal to the Brahman in set sitting in the other house. Uh, in fact, in this lecture, I will explain again why this thing is well defined. So this was the first lecture with a, a list of some rationally connected varieties of interest. Then there was the second lecture where I was discussing uh, good vibrations. Which is, we have a morphism from X to P1K, to make things simple. X is smooth projective, the map is dominant, the joint fiber is the integral, and then one defines delta to be the sum of the degrees of closed points where the fiber XM is not split. So not split means that, so I repeat, uh, XM, so XM because x is smooth, this is just a, a, a sub-variety of codimension 1 inside x. So we have this variety xm over the field k of m, the residue field at m. And you want so it is split. By definition, it means uh, there exists y in xm component of multiplicity 1, which is geometry integral. integral over the field K of M. Okay, this is split. So we count the number of, so the, the, if delta is big, this is a difficult situation. So what we saw in the, in the second lecture, we saw the good case when delta was either zero or one. So there was the case delta equals zero, where all the fibers are split, and then in that case, we have that the map from x of kv, this implies that the map from x of kv to p1 kv, this map, the induced map, my the morphism f, is on to for almost all v. And the delta is 1. If we take, um, so that is we have x over p1k, and then we have a1k, so let's say the bad point is the point at infinity, we can look at y, the, the fiber of A1k. Then we can think of integral models. And then in this situation where we have y over A1k, what happens is that the integral points are onto A1 over OV for almost all V. And then from this, we deduced, so if um, the smooth fibers uh, of F over K points satisfy a third principle and weak approximation, then we conclude that for delta equals zero, this implies, so these properties imply that X um, satisfies, so x of k top is equal to x of a k. So in that case, if the fiber satisfies that's a principle weak approximation, and this invariant is small, 0, 1, then the total space satisfies um, as a principle and weak approximation.
There's no bra group here. Okay. So this is what I explained in, in the in the in the second lecture. This was the second lecture, and then the third lecture. The third lecture we had some cases where delta is equal to two. So we still assume this hypothesis. Still assume this this hypothesis here. Okay. So let's put this one, let's call it star, double star. So assume double star. And so one case with delta equals two, uh, where we could, where we had the Hassel principle of equation for total space. This was the case of a, a family of quarks. Oh, sorry, of two dimensional quarks, which we liked, which we wrote like this: c z square plus d t square, different from zero. And so we view this as a, a fiber product of two families of conics. So we had a one lambda, if you want, g m lambda. And then we had this, this, this one family, uh, let's call it x, and then this one y. And we just took, we took the fiber product, z here. And then in this case, the delta is equal to 2, because you have the problem with lambda equals 0, and lambda equals infinity. But nevertheless, using Dirichlet theorem, this implies the Hasser principle plus weak approximation for the total space for z. So for zero, what we're using here was weak approximation in K. And for delta equals one, we're using strong approximation in K. And then for delta equals two, this particular case here at least, we're using something even harder, namely Dirichlet's theorem, which is proved using L functions. And then in the third lecture, we also had, a, um, we had two things. We had, uh, first of all, for delta bigger than 2, I explained Shinsa's hypothesis. H, which is, a, as you remember, a very wide generalization of the conjecture in twin primes. And then I, there was the version H star, which was uh, the softer, I mean, which was uh, which followed from H, but which was uh, easier to use, which is over in the number field, which was divided by there, but it's quite easy consequence of uh, H. Yeah. And then we saw that if we assume this, so if we assume this is a conjecture, okay, so under H, if we look at an equation, y, if we look at y square minus x square equals p of x, where p irreducible, and this is very important, of arbitrary degree. Then, in fact, in this case, has a principle plus weak approximation hold for, the, for any smooth projective model of this surface. Okay. And this is a case which is really where the delta, in fact, in that case, is degree of p or degree of p plus one, depending whether the degrees are or even or odd. Okay. So we saw that. But then we also saw, so I, this is, a, I'm finishing the, the review of what we had done before. So we also saw that if we looked at this particular example, and it's easy to produce many more, x squared minus 2 over q. So Iskowski uh, proved, I think, in 1970 that this is a counterexample to the Hasser principle. So, so in this case, x of q uh, is, uh, if it, well, we have x of q included, of course, in x of aq a bra. And this is in X of AQ. This one is not empty, but this one is empty. And so X of Q is empty. So this is a case where we have a conic bundle. So the fibers with respect to X satisfy the Hasser principle, the smooth fibers at the end weak approximation, because as soon as they have a rational point, they P1, so the weak approximation holds in the fiber. But um, the delta in that case is 4. We have the bad point at root, uh, root plus and minus root 3, plus and minus root 2. So the degree is, the delta is 4, and then we have a counterexample to that principle. Okay. So this was the, what we have seen in the previous lectures. Okay, so, uh, so what I want to do today is, I'm going to do, in the first uh, R, I'm going to discuss more arithmetic, and in the second R, 
as usual, I'll be more algebraic. I'll discuss more things about the Brouwer group of varieties or an arbitrary field. Okay, so let me start with a basic uh, proposition. So if we have x over k uh, projected variety, so projected is important, over a number field, and we have an element a in the bra of x, then for almost all v, almost all means uh, all but finite many ones, finite many, uh, almost all means, uh, uh, okay, then, well, let, let me I write it once and then I won't write it again, but then, let's see, then there exists a finite set S in the set of places of K, which depends on, S depends on X and A, finite, such that for V not in S, the evaluation map on X of KV in bar of KV is zero. Okay, so you have your element which is X is defined over a number field. The, the element in the bar group is defined over the number field. And then you evaluate for each place v. And the statement is that for almost all v, you always get zero. So let me offer two proofs, which are not completely detailed, either of them. It's a well-known trick. You don't detail any proof, but you give two of them. Okay, so the first proof is you use, you, you quote Grotendieck, and then Grotendieck tells you the following. So if you have x over spec k, Variety of finite type over the field. You can write it, you can write some model, spec OS, where OS is uh, the ring of integers away from S. So you can find a, a model of the ring of integers, which is a finite type. And then the theorem is that, uh, that uh, HI et al of X with values in GM is the direct limit of the HI et al of X uh, OS. Let's more call it OS, uh, with values in GM for S getting bigger and bigger. Let's see, it's bigger and bigger. Okay. So we, you draw, throw away more and more primes. And then the statement is that the cohomology of the joint fiber is the li direct limit of the cohomology of the total spaces. Commuting of cohomology with uh, direct limits. Yeah, with, with um, so the, the state yeah. statement is. Uh, yeah, yeah, filtering yeah. direct limits yeah, with yeah. affine transition morphisms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> filtering yeah, sure. and, uh, and affine trans yeah. transition morphism to be on the safe side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is proved somewhere in HGA4. Uh, uh, well, HGA4 and I can't. Oh, I think okay, it's okay. seven, but yeah. I, I'm not sure. But anyway, so, so this is one thing. Okay. So this is, I'm just using that X is a finite type. Okay. That's all I'm using here with respect K. Uh, <coughs> And then, so you take, so you, you start with your a in the problem of x, which is, I, I recall, is a, by definition, is h2 et al of x with values in gm. Okay, then there exists some s0 in omega k, such that a is the image of some a, where a belongs to the bar group of x o s0. It's a direct limit. And now, big, now, now I use the fact that x is projective. And so let's say separate, well, it's, it's projective, so it's separated. Um, and so uh, x of kv for v not in S0 is the same as x of ov, where ov is the ring of integers. Because the variety is projective. So the kv points are the same as the ov points. Okay. And now you have the obvious diagram. So, you have, so we are looking at x of kv goes to bra of kv by evaluation of a. But this is the same thing as x of ov. And then we can evaluate 
the A, because this whole thing is functorial, and now we land in the problem of UV. But the Brow group of this complete DVR is just the Brow of this radio field, which is a finite field, so it's zero. Okay, so that's the end of the proof. Once you've accepted the, this, this fact here. And it's a very standard proof, so if you've ever looked at the proof of the weak model of a theorem, you will recognize the same type of argument. Okay, so, okay, this is, well, let, let me stick to this proof, okay. Uh, the other proof would be uh, in, when A is as a Maya, you look at the cerebral scheme and then you use the, the fact that the fibers, the morphism is split, so the map from X of KV to Y of KV is on to for almost all V. But, uh, okay, let's, let's stick to this one. If it's cerebral. Ah, okay. But this proof, had one advantage is that it would work even for, I mean, it would work even if X was singular, in which case the brow group need not be torsion. But nevertheless, it works for. Yeah. I'm sorry, I repeat, it's just X of finite time. That's what you use here. OK, so the, the corollary of this is that once you have this. So you would take uh, <coughs> uh, any i, uh, which is uh, at least 2. Well, you can do it for pick. No. Huh? No, the total, uh, I mean. Uh, this formula is true for any i. But this argument. Uh, oh, it's i equals 2. It's i equals, so yeah, this is i equals 2. So it is applied for i equals 2. I mean, the one for i equals 1 is easier because it's pick, once you know that each one is one is it's obvious that, uh, well, it's obvious that, yeah, the level of pick that you can. Uh, okay. okay, so the, the, the corner of this is that the, the Brown Manning set is well defined. So now, so if now, x over k is, uh, say, projective variety. Then we have a map from product of x of kv, v in omega, cross prob of x, goes to q mod z, defined by sending a family mv, an element in the bra of the prob x, to the sum of d of mv. Because for any given a, almost all the AMV are zero. So that sum uh, makes sense. <coughs> Sorry? Is it the second proof? The second proof? Yeah. So you want to see the second proof? Okay, I second. No, no, no. I, 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 I so. No, the second proof. So no, no. I, I okay. I, I didn't say so. Second proof. So no, I, no. I'm saying the con no, con no, no. This is not the second proof. Okay. So. Just the question was, is it the second? Proof? So no. This okay. I, so I wrote an A. I'm going to write a B. Uh, as Gabriel says, if there's an A, there should be a B. Uh, so, so, so B is uh, if uh, A is as a Maya. Then you have a Y which exists over X which is a several bar variety. So it's a, all the fi geometric fibers are, are projective spaces. And then, uh, because, because x over k is, is, is proper, that implies by the, the splitting uh, criterion I was saying that y of kv subjects to x of kv for almost all v. OK, you have the several bar as associated to a. Mm -hmm. okay. And so, but now, uh, to say that the point here is an image here is exactly to say that A vanishes at that point. So mm -hmm. that, that concludes the proof in that case. Mm -hmm. But let, come, let me come back here. So we see that this sum makes sense because, as I repeat, for any given A, uh, the A of MV will be zero for almost all V. So it's a finite sum. Okay. So therefore, you can define the Brownian in set as the kernel. Now, in fact, you could argue Okay, so so the so now note that if you take x over k, any uh, separated of right of finite type, then you can actually define a pairing between the adels of x and the brow of x, because the adels by definition is precisely by definition is the union for all the possible s 
of things like product v in s of x of k v cross product v not in s of x of o v, where this is an integral model. And so the, your element in bar of x will come from bar of, of curly x if you take it suitably small. So you can define a pairing like this. It's always defined. So you can define for any variety which is separated, you can define a Brahman inset x of a k, bra, x. But it's um, because you do not, you see, the advantage here is that for a given a, uh, you know that there is a finite set where away from this set is zero. In fact, in practice, you can tell which set so that you can compute this. Whereas this is nice and elegant, but in practice, you don't know how to compute it. So computing this is difficult. Whereas computing this one in practice is not too difficult. That's the difference. So difficult to compute. It has been used for problems about integral points. So if I have time at the end of the lectures, I will talk about integral points. But for the time being, I stick to rational points. And I, when I stick to rational points, I might as well use smooth projective varieties. OK. Now. Uh, the next point is that, so this is a proof here. The next point is that if x is not projective, this is uh, wrong. I mean, if x is not proper, this statement is wrong. But it's wrong in an interesting way. We're going to see this. So, uh, so first of all, I start with a basic example. You take. Uh, I say, I say q, k equals q. And I take an element a in q, which is not a square. And then I look at gmq, so basic object. And I look at which, which I spec of k, q of t of t, 1 over t. And then I look at the Cotton algebra t a which is an element of bra group of GM. Because T is a unit, T is invertible on this, A is a constant, so we get this quaternion algebra. Okay. Now, because there exist infinitely many primes P such that A is not a square, in QP, or if you prefer A bar, is not a square in FP star, where the prime doesn't divide A. Uh, then, if I take su such a P, I, and I look at P comma A, I find that this thing in the problem of QP is non-zero. So I, for the value of T, I said P, and like P A. F P star. No, it's P star. Oh, yeah, minus square. Sorry, uh, square. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not a square. Yeah. Okay. So you, you, one knows how to compute the value of this. If you take two elements in QP, there are basic formulas to compute the value. And the simplest case is when we have a unifying parameter here and a unit there. In that case, it's just you take the unit and you're away from two. Just take the unit, look modulo squares, and you just see whether it's a square or not. And so that, so you see, we see that in this case, there are infinite P's where the, the evaluation of this thing on the QP points is non-zero. Okay. Now, a, a basic fact, which is uh, quite, quite what I want to, to go into detail, is something which has gone into the, uh, this specific literature as uh, Array's formal lemma, is that this is a complete general fact. This, this fact we saw there. Okay, so I write the theorem. Well, uh, there will be two theorems. There will be a theorem 1 and a theorem 2. So I start with theorem 1. Theorem 1 is I take uh, x, so I have k is the number field. I have x containing u, which are smooth integral varieties. And I start with element A in the bra of U. 
and I assume that it doesn't belong to the bottlenecks. Sorry, you wrote because uh, exists infinitely many p, uh, so uh, this is the reason for what? Oh, this okay. Because, so I'm sorry. So this implies so. So this implies that if I so to create so the result is I, if if I take so if um, a is not a square in Q p star, then the evaluation of this element a here. in barb of QP uh, is not reduced to zero. It contains the image, contains one half. So we have infinite many primes P for which the image is not reduced to zero. Whereas here, in the proper case, we have the fact that given A, the evaluation is, is z identically zero in X of QV for, for almost all V. So that's the difference. So the thing is not well defined. Well, you cannot no. You cannot define well. So it's not defined. If you if you want to, if you want. So the conclusion is that you cannot stupidly, as one would do it, take this and pair it as bar of GM. It doesn't work. Okay. So you, you're not allowed this. But uh, but you are allowed actually uh, GM of A. This is okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, in fact, <laughs> I said it's not useful, but it is useful. So, in fact, this uh, one can use this. And in fact, Ari has used this to to study integral points and equations like well, GM of course is very trivial. But for instance, deciding whether an equation like this one has a solution in integers when a and c are integers is a non-trivial problem, and you can use this to decide this kind of thing, except that because the bar group is enormous, in that case, you write down a theoretical theorem, which you cannot use in any concrete case because there are infinite num number of ch conditions to be checked. So I, 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 I'll come back to this later uh, when I talk about integral points. But okay, so this is all I wanted to say here that we couldn't do that. Okay. So, uh, so, the, so these are the hypotheses. And then the conclusion is that then, there exist infinitely, infinitely many v in omega k such that the evaluation map from uh, u of kv to bar of kv. So I can evaluate my a because a is in, in bar of u. Is that the image is not identically zero? The image contains is differs from zero. So this is what we saw up there in the case of GM. So this is a RA uh, 1996, I think. So uh, what we saw in this special case for GM is a complete general fact. That is the statement. Okay. So I, I want to give a. So, quite a few ingredients of that proof because I think it's it's really I mean it shows how things work I mean it's, intuitively you feel it's because this A has a residue uh, between X and U that's the idea so the idea is that the idea is that A uh, is not in bar of X implies there exists a residue there exists some X in X1 called dimension 1 X belonging to X minus U where the residue at x of the a, which, which is in h1 of k of x q mod z, is non-zero. Okay, this is a purity statement. We know that uh, this, uh, something is, is in bar of x if and if all the residues are trivial. Okay, so that's that's where. Uh, silly question. Yeah. Uh, of at least two. Well, then it's, this is not possible. Ah, okay, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so now the idea is that you're going to shrink, 
you may shrink the situation. You, you want to prove so, you want to prove that uh, the inflame AVs for which this map is, is uh, covers more than well covers something else than zero. Well, we can find any sub variety in which this is true. We'll be ha we'll be happy to do that. Okay, so you can shrink. You can shrink. Shrink. Yeah, shrink. Uh, everything. So x, u, z. So let's, let's, let's call it z is u. By definition, z is x minus u. Shrink x. Shrink x, in fact. So that uh, x is affine. Uh, z in x is defined by uh, just one equation, f in a, a non, f non zero. So z is spec of a mod f. And this is uh, integral and smooth. If it's, you know, if, if it's not smooth, then you, you, you take away the singularities and you shrink and more and more, and you can do that. So you may assume, well, we can get open sets where we have this situation. And where our element A, oh, there are two A's, sorry, um, R. Um, and our element A belongs to the bra group of U. But A doesn't belong to prob of, prob of, of, um, of, of X. Okay. So what happens is that in that case, that the delta, the residue, and the residue uh, at the point Z of A is non-zero in H1 of the function field of Z. Q mod Z. So we just looked at a, a point where we had this bad situation, we shrink, uh, we get, we're shrinking, with, I mean, the infinity was like this, so where the one z was all this, but then you just forget these components, just stick on one. Okay. Now, because z is smooth, we made z smooth. Why, why smooth. Because if it's not smooth, I take away, I take away, uh, I take away the singular locus. Okay. Ah, you work over number filter? No, no, I, I'm over, uh, for the time being, this is over any field of characteristic zero, the argument. Ah, okay. for, for the time, uh, at the end, we'll use number fields, but for the time, it's okay, okay. so we, we can use, uh, yeah, I mean, so if, uh, so if my situation is like this, so let's say, and I have this thing of code dimension, I have something which is singular here. Uh, well, I, okay. it's in code dimension two, so I mean, it takes away something of code dimension two, and, Anyway, you see, the whole situation is located, is, is concentrated around the joint point of the Z. So I just take an open set, which is affine, and which contains the joint point of Z. And and the, question, okay, so the question was, is your field certainly expected or not? The question was... Uh, is of characteristic zero, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. But it is okay. Yeah, yeah the, this is, well, uh, I don't, I mean, I mean, if you've ever studied the class fees, higher class fees theory, mm -hmm. you know that uh, Cato mm -hmm. writes uh, uh, five pages to handle the prime to p case and 100 pages to handle the p torsion in characteristic p. Okay? And you know that if Gabar is in the room, he will say, what happens for the p torsion in characteristic p? And then, you know, if Fontaine is in the room, he'll say, anyway, the prime to p torsion is trivial. <laughs> so, 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 anyways. so I'm sorry, I'm in this trivial case. <laughs> Okay, so now the fact that Z is smooth implies, and if, even if it didn't, you, you could arrange that, in fact, the delta Z of A is in H1 of Z with a in Q mod Z. Uh, so I could, well, uh, okay, this is a subtle point, but I can assume this because a priori my residue is in H1 of the function of Z. So again, it's defined over some open set. I take away the bad set and I shrink some more. I can assume this. So I say may assume, even though it's automatic, that the, the residue, in fact, is in H1 et al of Z and Q mod Z. Okay? And it's not zero. Okay? This is a subgroup of that one. So now we look at uh, this. This defines a cyclic covering of Z of some exponent. The order, say the order is, is R. So we get a Z dash goes to Z 
And this Z, which is affine, I can find it as a finite cover, if I want, using Noether's lemma, of some affine space ADK. So I have Z, which is a finite cover of affine space, which is, and Z is integral. And then I have this Z dash over Z, which is defined by this character chi. Let's call it chi. And this is defined by chi. And because I took R minimal, this Z dash is integral. Degrees R. So now we have this, this thing, which is, which this is finite, this is finite, and this is integral. So we can use, now k is a number field. So here is the arithmetic ingredient. You use Hilbert's ir uh, irreducibility theorem. And then you find, so let me stick to my notation. You find a P0 here over K, a rational point, such that the fiber here is a closed point P, closed, and the fiber here, so this is a fiber square diagram, I'm taking the fibers here, and the fiber here, and I can even take it smooth, I mean, this, uh, I mean it can be on the smooth locus, and this one is, how is it called? Uh, I'm not sure what I want to call it. I want to call it, let's say Q for the time being, okay, Q. So this is integral. So it bet you it is theorem, the basic theorem, if you've never seen it, it says if you have an irreducible polynomial in two variables to start with, f of tx of a number field, if it's irreducible, there are lots of values of the parameter t in t0, so that when you specialize, you get something irreducible. And you, you have this over NA, instead of A1, you could do this over AD. So that's what we're using here. So when you evaluate, your, what happens is that therefore your character, when you evaluate at this point P, it still remains non-zero. Okay. So this is chi restricted to, P, to this close point P in Z. Integral, integral is a key point. So this is irreducible. This is, apparently this is a product of fields, but in fact it, it is a field. Okay. Okay. So uh, now what do I do? Now I, so now I have my variety. Z here, and on this Z, this is the this is the place where we have this residue. We've produced this point P, this close point P. Okay. Now the fact is, find a, a, find a smooth curve, smooth irreducible curve. C in uh, X, which is transversal to uh, Z at the point P. So you find a curve, C. Uh, again, you can find it smooth in the neighborhood of P. If, if need be, you shrink it. Okay? You shrink the whole X. So you find a smooth curve, C, which is transversal here. And then you're going to, to restrict the whole situation of X, U, Z to the curve. Okay, you're reduced to the curve. Awesome. Sorry? Uh, so you like... So you draw a picture. Yeah. Now you like to uh, reduce all the data uh, which are on this picture. Yeah. So I have Z in here in X and U here, and I have C, and I take the, the fiber product, which is just this close point P, and then I have this v, open set V, which is the tra trace on, on this one. Okay. Now I look at this situation. And I have my A now, which is restricted to V, in the bra group of V, this open set of the curve. And the residue, so now because the thing is transversal, when you compute residues, you're, you're in business. So if I look at bra of U, goes by, I have this residue delta at Z in H1 of Z with coefficient Q mod Z. If I restrict to V, and I compute the residue at the point P, in H1, K of P, Q mod Z. Well, in fact, I can complete with simple evaluation. And this is because the, the curve has been chosen transversal to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to Z. Okay. So when, 
you, you can take, take, take the restriction, take the residue, it's the same as taking the residue here and taking the, the restriction at that point P. And we know that this class is non-zero. So this chi here is chi, chi P, which is non-zero. And in fact, of order R here. Yeah. Okay. So now we're reduced to proving the theorem for the case of a curve. If you find infinitely many KV points on your, on your curve, such that the evaluation of your class here is non, not reduced to zero, then you take these points on the total space. So this reduces to the case of a curve. Reduce the, reduce the theorem, reduces proof to the case of a curve. Uh, yeah? I'll say, uh, too much series uh, to use uh, number theory argument. I mean, uh, to get that geometric picture. No, the, the geometric argument is because you want to ensure that the, the residue which you add on Z, which is of exponent R, yeah. when you evaluate it on a suitable point, yeah. is still of exponent R. Where do you use that? Uh, well, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use the fact that... I'm going, so, no, what I proved yeah. is that Using, oh no, using Hilbert theory theorem, yeah. I proved that this element A, which had a residue of order R, I can reduce it, I can induce it on some curve yeah. in such a way that uh, it still has a residue at an intersection point, yeah. which is of order R. Of the same order. Of the same point. order. Yeah. I, I want non zero, but anyway, to prove non zero, I don't know yeah. any other way. I'm going to use the. That it is non-zero. Ah, okay. But uh, if my field is not a number field, I don't know how to do this kind of thing. So okay. it's straight here. I will this well, no, no. I mean, if you were an algebraically closed field, it wouldn't work. What I just said. Suppose k was algebraically closed. Yeah. I mean, of course, uh, uh, the, the evaluation of a class in H1 v q mod z at any point mm -hmm. is zero. Even though for a curve, the H1 of the curve over the very close, the close field might have some non-trivial cyclic coverings. Okay, right. But going through that point doesn't work. Okay, yeah. okay. So, so. Nice. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can discuss if, if you reduce the curve mm -hmm. over a very close field, can you still, yeah, you can make this work. I think, yeah, I, I should have to think, but I think you, you, you should be able to make it work. But then to finish, mm -hmm. uh, to prove what I want to prove, I, I don't see. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Okay, but anyway, the, the key point is we want this chi, this residue at p to be non-zero. Okay, here. Okay, and so now, for the curve, it's not well. It's for the so. So now, now, we have c is a curve, smooth curve, smooth a fine curve. C is spec r. Let me call it spec r. Okay, it's, it's, uh, I cut it, but I, let me call it spec r again. And then I have um, P, the closest point P, which is defined by the spec of R divided by F. And I have this A in bra group of U, of bra of V, sorry. P, V is the complement. And there is that P of A is a chi, and it's non zero. Okay, so, so the, the, the next trick is to do the following thing is that. To replace C by, so um, this chi here lives in H1 of K of P Q mod Z. Now this is the same thing as H1 of the hensalization of uh, the curve of C at the point P with questions in Q mod Z. Okay, this is the way you feel is K of P. Now hensalization is direct limit of this uh, finite et al covers with the same residue field. It's strict, it's, it's hensalization, okay. It's, it's not strict, it's the hensalization. Ah, hensalization. So, it, so, so that means that, so the conclusion is that there exists a curve D with a map to C, so there's a curve here. Uh, with a, so the point P is here, and with a point above it, which is, the, which is, we shall call P dash, but which is isomorphic to P, and this is et al, 
and the point is covered. Okay, so we have your curve C, and then your close point P, and you can find something eta. So you drop something; they don't care. What you want is really same same relief field here, P dash here. This is eta. Okay, and P dash goes to P. Such that now the class chi, when you restrict it, which was at the, the, in H1 uh, K P dash Q mod Z, comes from a class chi in H1 of D Q mod Z. So on the curve, you, now you have this cyclic covering of the curve. Okay, and so now you consider um, so the point P dash is defined on D by just the same equation by F. Because I can I find it eta if I have some points here I drop I I, I, I get rid of all the points which are above this one. You're already given with this P prime, which is given by I'm given this P prime. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is given absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, if I took uh, this thing a bit in a stupid fashion, for instance, mm -hmm. it could be etal, and there could be more points here. I, I get, get, I get rid of them. Okay. So similarly, I get rid of the singular. <laughs> I want it smooth. Okay. So now it's given by f, and now you look at. Now remember we had a. Now look at a restricted to d minus uh, chi. Let's call it chi d. Chi D cup F. So this chi D cup F, what does it mean? Well, it means this chi D is in H1 of D with coefficients in Z mod R. And this F is in K of D star, the units modulo the uh, R star. So I can take the cup right and I get an the bar of D. So let's call it, uh, let's define B, D is by definition, B is by definition AD minus this thing here. Absolutely. So the fact is that now, sorry, I'm, elim I'm eliminating the theorem, but you, you have it in mind. Uh, now, if you look at B, the claim is that now B belongs to the power group of D. There are no more poles. Because that thing, this F is a unit away from D. This thing is something, it's, it's, it's holomorphic on D. So there's no problem away from the point P dash. But if I look at delta P dash of B, I find precisely uh, H uh, chi evaluated at the point P dash minus the residue of this, which is because F is a unifying know, parameter, is just chi of P dash. Chi D at P dash. We get zero. Okay. So, so this is the proof. Okay, and so now, uh, now by, uh, so now, now, so B belongs to the bar group of D. Now that implies that uh, there exists. Okay, let me. So now I take D over K. Now these are fine, but I can find a model of a spec, o, a spec OS, which is also fine. And my B comes from bar group of D here. Okay. So if I look at OV points here. On this, on this D, I find that if I take points which are in D of OV, cross and evaluate these points by means of B, I get zero. Because I'm, I'm restricting to OV points. Okay. So if I look at OV points yeah. of D, for V not in S, so I produce some s, finite s, s is always finite. I produce some s where these things are fine and might be with reason the barb of d belongs to the barb of d, d, curly d. Now, this thing is not proper, but, but yeah, still, yeah. if I restrict to all v points, integral points, yeah. I'm okay because if I evaluate an element in barb of d on an OV point for v not in s, I get another barb of OV. So, so, okay, 
if I t so I have d okay d is over k. Uh, and I take well d is over k, so it's some affine curve yes, over k. Right. I write a model of a, of an open set of the ring of integers. Now I take a v which is not in s. So v is not in s. So I have a map from spec o v to spec o s. Okay, and so I look at. Uh, so if I take an OV point, an OV point is that something like this. Okay, so if I take an OV point of D, and I take my element in the bar of curly D, I get an element of bar of spec OV, and this is zero. But how do you define uh, discrete? This what? This this, this uh, B. The the D. The very right B. The very the B. This very curly D. Sorry. You have the formula. Uh, something belongs to bar of uh, D dash. No, below. Low, yeah. Low, below. This one here? Yeah, right. Well, it's the same argument. D over k is the direct limit of the D over spec OS. So an element in the bar of D ah. will belong to bar group okay. of D over spec OS for some S. Okay. Okay. So there exists some S, okay. finite, okay. where B it belongs to bar of D. Okay. And then for this, for the Vs which are away from S, I have no problem. To, it's checking that the image of D of OV in, is zero in bar of KV. No, actually, I want. I really want points. I, I want many points like this, okay? uh, and I can get many points like this as soon as I know that my D has OV points. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not too hard because I take yeah, so if V uh, is split in K of P of a K, and I know there are infinite many by Chebyshev. Mm -hmm. If V is split in K of P of a K. Then my so remember the, the the problem is that the D. What did we know about D? Mm -hmm. All we know is that it contains this point P dash, which is a closed point. Mm -hmm. We don't know whether it has a rational point, but it has a rational point of, a, of P dash, mm -hmm. and the FMA V is by Chebotarev, which splits in K of P dash. Mm -hmm. So if I take such a V, then I'm sure there are KV points. See. There are infinite many Vs, so it's like K of P dash, tensor K, KV. Yeah, yeah, Chebotarev is used here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the first R, remember. <laughs> okay. So by Chebotarev, we know that infinite many Vs, such that V splits as a product of KVs in K of P dash. Okay. So from this, we get KV points and, in fact, OV points, if we look very precisely. So we have this on, on D. On D. Because I want this to be infinite, you no, see. On no, no. I, on, well, on, okay, on D to start with. But if you think a little bit, you find that in fact this decomposition. Um, okay, so we had this um, this K of P, P dash point was an integral point away from finite many places. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 And this decomposition, you get it also at the level of ring of integers mm -hmm. if you're an un unrefined set. Mm -hmm. you want to descend from D to C? Or Sorry. To, you know, to a chi, key, no, no. So we have, so we have D here. I use Chebotarev to ensure this. I want, I want, so I want uh, D of O V to be infinite. Okay, and that for any V, I'm not sure I can get it. But what I claim is that infinite many Vs, so the D of V is infinite. So the claim is that there exist infinitely many Vs, not in S, with D of O V infinite. That's my claim. And this uses Chebotarev. Let me. Right, this here. So I repeat, this D, which is of respect K, contains a point P dash. So we have a map spec K, K of P dash, like this. Okay. Now this thing extends to a D of a spec OS, and here a spec O or T, let's call it ring of integers inside inside here. Mm -hmm. Now here we have spec k and here we have spec k of p dash. 
Now I can assume that this is finite eta. And now Chebotarev tells me that I inflate my Vs such that this thing splits completely over KV. Mm -hmm. But then this one will split completely over OV. And so I get my OV points. Mm -hmm. Okay? And in fact, uh, infinite. Okay. So I get this infinite set of Vs where this evaluation is zero. Okay. So now, but what, remember what I want. So, okay, so this is D over V. So, we, so we, I hope we convince with this one. Okay, this, the D over V is infinite. And uh, the evaluation of B on D of OV is trivial. Okay, we're here. Now I look at A. Now I have A over D, which is, uh, which is B plus uh, chi D comma F. Okay. And then I want to evaluate this thing on these OV points. So I, this OV point, so if I take an OV point which is different from the, the bad point P dash, so take an OV point M in uh, D of OV, M different from this unique point, or this, uh, this P dash, MV, sorry. Then I find that uh, B of OV, MV is zero, so I find that A evaluated at MV is equal to chi D V evaluated at MV. Mm -hmm. Now I have to think my chi D so I had, I had this cover, C here, goes to D, and then this cover, which was given by chi D. And here I had K of P, here I had K of P dash, and then here I have a further extension, which was denoted K of Q here, uh, whatever, I mean, there's a further extension corresponding to, this chi D evaluated here gives me a, a field extension here, K of P double dash, field extension. given by chi d. Okay. Remember that chi d was uh, co corresponding to this extension here, which is an extension field. So, uh, now ne comes the next trick, is that, okay, we have a, a version of Chebot tariff which is more subtle than this, so we have a situation where we have k, k of p dash, and here k of p double dash. This is our number field. Mm -hmm. And the statement is that the infinite AVs, so and this one is cyclic of degree R. The statement is that infinite AVs, which are split here, but which are not split there. In mm -hmm. omega k, split in K of P dash, not split, and in fact we want them to be uh, in that uh, up there, in K of P double dash. Okay, this is a key uh, technical point, but this is very important for what we want, because then you see that when you evaluate your chi D at F M V, you'll get chi D of M V will be non-zero. And then the f is f of mv. So, so what is the, the, valuation, the, the value of this? So the, the a of mv, in fact, is equal to, sorry. Mm. a of mv will be equal to um, uh, the, 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 the valuation of f of mv, remember f is a function, times chi d of mv. So this one is non-zero. This is in H1 of KV uh, Zen mod R. This one is non-zero. And so all you want is now this V of MV wants this to be congruent to one mod R. So you want to choose the MV in such a way that it's congruent to one mod R so that the value will be non-zero. Okay. And that you can do because 
so you can do because what happens is that okay we had mv so let's say we have d uh, and this equation f equals zero okay so d um, so we have c here with d here and this equation so the point p here the point p dash this is defined by f equals zero and then um, the, the place V is split in this extension so that on top of KV we get uh, KV points. Okay. And so we want to uh, find an MV such that F evaluated MV, F vanishes at order 1 on, on the point P. At order 1 at the point P. And again, we must think, uh, if I, I should write this over the spec of OS. So the drawing is really over spec of OS. So I'm over spec of OS, D above C over spec of OS. Okay. And, and we have this, uh, P, this point P here and this point P dash. So this is P extended, P tilde, P dash tilde extended over spec of OS. But then we are when, when and they are looking at these points MV, our P tilde breaks up at pieces like this. Over, over, the, over these V's, so over spec OV. It, remember, it's a tau, and we have this V which is completed here. So we just want an OV point, but the value, so this is F equals zero, it breaks up as uh, several points. I just want an OV point where the value, where the, the F vanishes to all. I mean, of course, I won't take this point because F of MV is zero. Mm. Oh, okay. But I, I take a point which is close to it, and not to the other ones, just to, have, uh, to the big order, to this root, and which is, it has nothing to do with our roots, and the variation will be congruent to one mod r. Okay? It's just like you have, a, you have the polynomial, say, think of one variable, t over the, the affine line. You have something like t minus a, t minus b, t minus c, okay? and then you take your t very close to a, and away from the, the c and the b, so that the variation of t minus a is, is one. And you can do that. So that's the end of the proof. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we find infinite of these OV points for suitable Vs which are split in this extension K of P dash but not split up there, such that on these OV points our class, our original class A, uh, takes uh, takes the right value. Now you, you, there's one more objection is that we did the computation in D, okay, mm -hmm. but the class comes from from C. So we found, so we found, so found all these points, the KV points on D with A of MV non-zero, but A comes from, A comes from C. So you just take the image. So we have this projection map. So take the pi of MV and a of pi of mv is not zero because the value of a at, at, this, at the image of a point is just the value of uh, the point upstairs mm -hmm. okay. and so that's, that's the end okay. you find all these points uh, we, we, we made this trick with the ancillarization to get hold of the d and to have a representation for of a in the neighborhood of the place where there was a pole so we find the, the KV points at the level of D, but then we push them down to C, since anyway the algebra came from down below. So, uh, once again, uh, there were, uh, I think, three arithmetic uh, arguments. Yeah. So could you just stress once again? Uh, so Where we use the Hilbert theory to the theorem. Yeah, this was one, and then we use Chebotaris theorem in the subtle way that uh, not only you want something to be split, but in, in case when you have a cyclic extension like this, you want a V which splits here, but which doesn't split further here. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, this is all the arithmetic, but it's very important. Huh? Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's... Uh, okay. Of course, and then afterwards there are local computations of what is the, value, you know, the formula that uh, uh, if you take uh, over a periodic field, a unifying parameter times a unit, and uh, uh, did we use somewhere the 
computational power group of, uh, of local field or BD? Well, yes, yes, I am. This is what I'm saying here. We, we compute at the end. We have, uh, we have, um, we find that the value is given by this thing with more as a unit. So suppose the, the R was equal to two. What we would have here, we'd have a unit, and then we'd have a uni uh, unit which is not a square. Mm -hmm. And then we'd have a universalizing parameter, f of mv. Mm -hmm. And then that's non-zero. Okay. So that's, uh, yeah, this is used here. Yeah. And uh, one more question. Yeah. yeah. Suppose we uh, not over, uh, over a global field mean uh, of geometric type. Uh, mean uh, not uh, of characteristic zero but of characteristic p. So, well, so what happens is if you're away from the torsion, everything works the ah. same. If you're away from p torsion, everything mm -hmm. works the same. Mm -hmm. And people have written down their yeah, Chebotarifs. I mean, Chibotar, there's a version of Chebotarif. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a version of Hilbert theorem. Mm -hmm. So all these things are okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The p part it's really, it's, uh, it's it's ho it's horrible. I mean, it's, uh, ah, but uh, this fact that uh, there is a uh, brow element. Uh, I mean, you put... No, no, I mean, for the P part, you would have to do something. I mean, suppose if you, you start... Is it true? I mean... Uh, I, 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 some people have... Uh, um, I mean, I need the arguments just to say, uh, I mean, do you remember that it does hold, or maybe the, there is a problem, you are not certain, and... Okay, let's it. Uh, the argument I gave is Grothendieck with H2 et al. XGM. Mm -hmm. This one works, it doesn't work, involve a characteristic because you take GM. Mm -hmm. See, so when you take GM, it's good. Yeah, right. So that would work for the P part as well. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you start arguing with residues, you're in trouble. Because uh, basically, I mean, the, basically the point is that the, the basic fact is that if you take a complete dis discrete version ring mm -hmm. with residue field non-perfect, mm -hmm. then there is some analog of, of residues, which Kato has investigated, mm -hmm. but it's very complicated. So the quotient barb of K divided by barb of A has a whole filtration which involves the absolute differentials okay. on the residue field. Okay. Yeah. And then you would have to check at each level the filtration which you, which you can do. I mean, so it's, no, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes people do the, the hard work for this. I mean, Paramal and, and Suresh, yeah. they wrote a paper with, uh, with um, what's his name? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, anyway, anyway th where they actually studied uh, the p-torsion for barb of QP of a curve. Mm -hmm. And they, they got very nice results, where, which was just missing something in the work of Saltman. Mm -hmm. In fact, Saltman had some ideas, and Paramal and Suresh wrote the details. Mm -hmm. So you can handle. So when the, the imperfection degree of the refill is, is at most one, Sometimes you manage to do something. Okay. So, so, what I so now this theorem was so we had this theorem which I now erased. Uh, yeah. Not for no no I, and I write this theorem without the proof. Okay, I write one theorem without the proof. This is really the right place to stop. So we had the theorem one, but then the theorem two which is Harry's formal lemma, and which is, this is the one which is very useful. It's the following, you take x, which is a um, uh, smooth, same situation, x contains u, smooth integral, and then you take um, a subgroup b, in bra group of u and b is finite subgroup okay let me make the right assumption here so this is smooth integral yeah and i take a finite subgroup in bra of u and now i take pv in u of ak so i take an adl so it's I have some model, and the PVs are integral at almost all places. Okay, and then my, I make a hypothesis that 
for all alpha in B intersection broad of X. So remember, broad of X is a subgroup of broad of U. Uh, the sum for all V in omega of the alpha of MV, of PV, is equal to zero. So I just look at, it, at the, the ones which are unrified on X. And I make this sum, which I can make because my, I took an Adele of you. Okay? Actually, um, if, if you don't like this, I could say simply that X is projective. In fact, this is a case would be used. Let's say X projective here. And now I take my PV in U of AK. And then this makes sense now because X is projective, so I can take these sums because my elements are in broad of X. Okay. And then there exists another Adele. There exists another Adele uh, MV in U of AK such that, so sorry, if, and then fix S in omega finite. Find a set of places. It is another MV with MV is equal to PV for V and S and sum of beta of uh, MV V in omega is equal to zero for all beta in, in B this time. So this is the, the conclusion. So we start with uh, an, uh, an Adele in U, family of elements in this open set. And we have this, a uh, lot of uh, elements which are in, in the barb of U, but they might be ramified, okay, at infinity. But we assume that for the elements in B, uh, and B is finite, huh? the elements which are ramified, there is no Brownian obstruction. That's what it's saying, okay, for, for, uh, for this family MV, MV, PV. The conclusion is that up to changing the Adele away from S, mm -hmm. we can produce another one so that for all the elements in B, in broad of U, this sum is zero. And I'll show you after the break how this is useful. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the, the, the is you fix S, you fix. Basically, we, you, you want to approximate these PVs, so you fix a fine set of places where you want to approximate them, and the best way is to, to take them equal. Okay. So fix them. So yeah, yeah, you can fix it. Yeah, fix an S, fix an S finite. Yeah, an S finite, then you, you can do that. And the proof, anyway, I didn't plan to give the proof, but the proof is simply it's a combinatorial lemma starting from the previous one. So just combinator X. So it's basically a duality of finite ABN groups. You have to do it properly, but uh, find Abelian groups. You start from the one with just one element, and then you get this one, implies this thing. So I, I wrote down it. So in the notes which I mentioned, I wrote down the details of the, these two proofs. Mm -hmm. and you can have ah.